Stephen Feld noticed that the Kaluli of the Basavi rainforest in Papua New Guinea had a deep understanding of their sonic-rich forest environment. He suggested that to the Kaluli, sound was central to making sense, to knowing, to experiential truth. It is the same for the Baka. Born in this environment, you learn to listen to the forest at a very early age. In the forest, you have no need for maps, no need for clocks. Each time of day, each physical space has its own unique soundscape. Now we're going to look at the back of women's singing, the yeli, how and why they do it, what it means to them, and the possible mechanisms that make it work. Here's some more, recorded in February 1992, deep in the rainforests of Cameroon by the river Bomba. Note that it's the same ternary rhythm we saw in the Bwamba in the last episode. The shaker she's playing helps everyone know where the beat is, where the triplets are. As long as everyone knows which beat they come in on, then the polyphony will work. You can just hear in the background the second woman working out her part, all in the chest voice, no yodels. In a rainforest, survival is dependent on your listening skills. Hearing becomes your primary sense. When walking through the forest, all members of a group will instantly react to sound, freezing mid-step. The backer see the forest as their loving parent who will look after you and keep you safe. You perceive all sounds as the forest speaking to you, telling you what you need to know. All sounds in the forest are telling you something. The hum of bees leads you to honey. The song of frogs leads you to water. There's no need to filter out irrelevant sounds. There aren't any. In our busy modern lives, we learn to cut out the myriad of useless noises that clutter our life. We actively learn not to listen.
One day, in 1992, I was walking in the forest with a hunter called McOliver. He was showing me how to lay snares so that I could look after myself and stop being a burden on the camp. We were walking along a path when he suddenly stopped, listening intently. I stopped too and listened. I could hear some bees far up in the trees to the right of us and I asked, Are you looking for honey? He looked at me in surprise and said in a shocked voice, You understand what the forest is saying. Being so tuned into the sound of the forest means you are in a constant conversation with it. Turning part of the conversation into song charms the forest. Aram suggests that pygmy polyphonic singing is pure music, as it has no words, whereas Lewis suggests that the sound produced are the forest's language. The intended recipient of the Ben Jelly's rhythmic utterances is the forest as an organic whole, of which people, spirits, animals and plants are all a part. Thus it's the forest singing to itself. Everything is in the moment, the now, in the Kaluli groove, as Feld would say. In this next song, we can hear three distinct voices coming in one at a time. First, there is a low voice. Then Loney, who's been the main singer so far, joins with a second line in a low register. A third voice copies the first, but in a higher register with yodel. Then Loney also shifts to a higher register. All these songs you've heard are recordings of the Baka women performing their yelly for their own reasons. It wasn't a performance for me. They are genuinely singing to the forest. I was told that all the men that night had to stay in their huts. I was woken by the singing and recorded them through the leaves of my Mongolu hut. The intensity of their singing increased as the night went on. I was asleep long before they finished. To the Bayaka, music has power both over the forest and animals. They believe that it is the women's songs that are responsible for the success of the hunt for big game, such as elephant. Yet the Benjeli, a subgroup of Aka, and the Baka interpret this in different ways. The Benjeli women believe that their spirits fly over the forest and tie the elephant spirits down so that the hunters can easily kill them. The Baka women believe that the spirits of past hunters walk with the elephants, herding them as the Hausa herd their zebu. The yelly singing encourages them to herd the elephants towards the hunter's spears. Yelly, when sung to ensnare big game, will only be sung by initiates, who will be the older women. Life is short in the forest, so that means over about 30. 
It is only the initiates who yodel. During spirit dances, all the women and girls will be singing, which is why it's been said that certain groups don't actually yodel, but imitate the sound using only their chest voice. It has also been said that the Western forest people don't hock it, but if you listen to the head voice of the yodel in this recording, it is hocketing. In Baka cosmology, all elements of the environment are interconnected. The forest is listening to its inhabitants and vice versa. Forest sounds are very diverse and polyphonic, so are Baka conversations with the forest. The song is a communication with the forest, the polyphonic sounds are the language of the forest. The myriads of creatures calling into the night give enough space in their calls so that all can be heard. The overall kaleidoscope of sound is a real-time representation of what is going on at that precise moment. Any changes are reflected in the sounds, all sentient beings reacting to the sounds and silences of the others. This is the voice of the rainforest that tells you everything you need to know, and being part of this soundscape enables you to affect what happens. In part four, we shall look at the connection between music and language at the nature of me and how music and dance are so important for the backers' well-being. <laughs>